This is the New York Living Health Report. This is Cheryl Wills. More than half of all newborn males in the United States are circumcised. The voluntary procedure involves the surgical removal of all or part of the foreskin. It's generally performed without any anesthesia within the first few days of life. But is the procedure medically necessary, or is it, as some claim, mutilation? This afternoon we're talking about ritual genital mutilation here on Walden's Pond. And Shelton Walden is a disc jockey for WBAI Radio. He's also a member of an international anti-circumcision group, which is called No Circ, which is the National Organization of Circumcision Information Resource Centers. He devotes many of his call-in shows to the controversial issue of routinely circumcising infant boys. This is a damaging thing to do to boys and that men are coming forward all over the UK and all over Northern Ireland now and documenting long-term harm from this procedure. Walden is part of a growing movement of men and women who are taking a stand against circumcision. When you look at what actually happens to the infant when he's strapped down on, on a board and uh, a clamp is placed over his penis and the, and, and the skin is ripped away and there's blood and there's pain. Uh, and, and, and to me, there's no, uh, there, there is no, there is no, um, there's no excuse for it. But to many doctors, there are a number of excuses for it, including the prevention of penile cancer. In a series uh, of um, penile cancers that were examined from 1933, um, and, and a series of approximately 60,000 cases, I believe that there were only three that were that occurred in circumcised male. So the circumcision is a clear benefit. But doctors admit there are risks associated with the cutting of the foreskin. They include excessive bleeding, infection, and extensive scarring. But proponents of circumcision say the benefits far outweigh the risks, which include the prevention of urinary tract infection, lower incidence of sexually transmitted diseases, and cleanliness. It is clearly uh, uh, easier to maintain uh, hygiene of the penis in a, non, in a circumcised uh, uh, patient than in a non-circumcised patient. And uh, it, poor hygiene has been accused to be <clears throat> responsible of both infections and, uh, and penile cancer. Uh, but there is no real uh, evidence for that. That's almost an insult to American men to say that uh, you cannot clean your own penis. Um, if, 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 you know, that saying that, uh, well, if, if that was the case, then we should you know, cut off portions of people's ears. We should cut off people, uh, part of uh, toenails and other, other um, extremities of people's uh, bodies. Well, the medical community is deeply divided over this issue as well. Some psychologists say that the physical and emotional trauma connected to circumcision leads to problems later on in life. The severity of remembering it uh, can be marked. Uh, the, however, the, the symptoms <clears throat> that become part of one's personality are even worse in the sense of, of feeling that you can't uh, move around freely in the world, uh, anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, many of these men cannot stand to have knives around. Dr. John Reinhardt is a psychotherapist who is a member of a national group known as DOC for doctors opposing circumcision. He says even though infants cannot talk, he says they do have a distinct sense of what's happening. When something's so early and it's not remembered and it's only remembered in body uh, in, in a cellular sense or a body sense and, and perhaps symbolically, then of course there's a tendency to deny it because our whole culture denies it. Well, this controversy is not new and the practice of circumcising infant boys goes back thousands of years. In our next report, we'll look at the history behind circumcision and we'll tell you about a movement that's encouraging men to reverse their circumcisions. Cheryl Wills, New York. This is the New York Living Health Report. This is Cheryl Wills. In our first report, we told you about the controversy surrounding neonatal circumcision of boys, specifically how a growing number of Americans say the surgical removal of the foreskin is unnecessary. Some even go as far as calling it mutilation. 
but there are millions of Americans who embrace the practice and say they are downright offended about the controversy, especially those who view circumcision as part of a sacred covenant. And first and foremost, circumcision for us is a religious act. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith that has sustained our people for 3,500 years. And throughout Jewish history, we've always had the naysayers. Uh, nevertheless, we're here. Other cultures are not. Rabbi Mark Schneer is the vice president of the New York Board of Rabbis. He says circumcision in the Jewish community has a rich history. It stems back to the days of Abraham, where God commanded Abraham as a sign of his covenant with God to be circumcised. In addition to the Jewish community, Muslims and many ethnic tribal groups circumcise for religious reasons as well. These groups, however, form a small minority. About 80% of the world's population does not practice neonatal circumcision, including most of continental Europe and Asia, as well as countries in the Western Hemisphere south of the Rio Grande. Here in the United States, about 60% of all American boys are circumcised during infancy. That's down from about 80% just 30 years ago. The practice dates back to the 19th century, where a popular American physician, Dr. P.C. Remondino, claimed circumcision was able to prevent masturbation and ailments such as epilepsy, hernia, and lunacy. Now it's viewed as a way to prevent diseases such as penile cancers and the maintenance of good hygiene. But in 1975, the American Academy of Pediatrics reported that there are no medical indications for circumcision in the neonatal period. That report was later endorsed by the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Well, some argue that report helped fuel the mounting opposition to routine circumcision. I feel it's a dehumanizing, degrading uh, operation that no one should have to endure. People should be asked, do you want me to do this to your genitals? Do you want me to do this to your body? 32-year-old Jimmy Winston from the Bronx was circumcised as an infant, and now he says he's so angry about it that he's trying to reverse it. So what I'm really doing is just putting back, basically trying to put back what was taken from me. And I'm not alone. I mean, a lot of males are doing that. Winston uses these weights to try to pull his skin back down. The shaft skin is stretched over and taped into place, and uh, gravity does the rest. Winston says the process is slow, but it's not painful. Nevertheless, many view the whole circumcision controversy as absurd and insist it's a non-issue. And the Jewish people have been able to survive any questioning or any persecution or subjugation. And I don't think we're bound to begin modifying our laws because some doctors are beginning to question it. Cheryl Wills, New York One.